Attorney General Loretta Lynch commenting on the Brussels attacks today. As we've seen here, the threat here in the homeland has been coming most recently from those individuals who are based here, who are inspired by, by terrorist or jihadist thinking online, ISIL or otherwise. Um, and so that's always a concern of ours, and certainly a concern would be whether or not they would be inspired by similar uh, attacks in Brussels or elsewhere. If you were listening closely, two words that you were not hearing, radical Islam. So is that the problem? Let's bring in and ask former Republican presidential candidate, Dr. Ben Carson. Dr. Carson, thanks for joining us. Always a pleasure. Uh, once again, we hear from the administration, and, and they go all the way around the idea of pinpointing exactly the problem here. And many people keep saying, if you don't say radical Islam, how can you ever defeat it? Well, it's interesting because it's fairly consistent throughout the administration. So obviously, they're being instructed not to use those terms because those are the terms that I think most Americans would use. And uh, it, it tells you that there's a, a basic disconnect there. And it, it extends itself into the policies. For instance, you look at how lax our security is on the borders. Uh, obviously, if we're not taking them seriously enough to even be able to name them, we're not going to do what we need to do in order to secure our borders. We're not willing to declare war on Islam and look at our immigration policies and our visa policies. All of these things are, are things that are putting the American population in jeopardy. And there's no sense of seriousness here. Well, you know, what do you make? And I could see President Obama saying, hey, you know, if, they, if we get too crazy about this, they've actually won because they've disrupted our lives in, the, in their, and that's their ultimate goal. But the wave at a baseball game with a dictator, the tango in Argentina, uh, you know, this seems to be complete indifference to the issue. Not whether they're taking it, you know, not, it's not even an issue to what degree they're taking it seriously. Sure. They're not taking it serious at all, it well, feels like. There's a, there's a real disconnection there. And you remember a couple of months ago, President Obama said that ISIS is not an existential threat to us, which means he doesn't really understand the whole concept of, of dirty bombs and attacking our electric grid and cybersecurity. All of these things, this is a new era in which we live. If you don't adjust to it, uh, we're going to suffer the consequences. Now, you, you mentioned earlier that all of America knows that this is radical Islam. Some people think it might be the entire religion. President Obama spends a lot of time preaching to us or, or, or trying to correct us, if you will. And this seems to be one of the areas where he repeats over and over again that, that it's Islam who's the most, mostly the victims of this sort of stuff and that somehow the American public overwhelmingly would like to see a temporary ban on all Muslims coming to this country. Got, have, are getting it wrong. Uh, do you ever think he'll have an epiphany and maybe say, maybe sometimes the public is right? I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little rhetorical, but I had to ask. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, it would be wonderful if he and, and everybody else would spend time reading about Islam. Uh, you know, really go back to, uh, to Mohammed and read about his life, you know, not only in Mecca but in Medina and his subsequent life and, and the hadith and the, the whole story of his life and the beliefs that systems that were brought out of that. It would give you a much better impression. Islam is not a religion. It is a lifestyle that doesn't really allow the separation of religion from right. politics. And it was born of violence, and, and it's been spread through violence, and of course, no succession plan has made it even worse when Muhammad died. Exactly. In Brussels, um, we, a couple of uh, ministers there offered up their resignation. I read where the mayor said uh, it was in their responsibility to follow these people. We know political correctness has run amok in Europe for decades, and now they're having second thoughts. What do you think is going to happen there? Because they've already lowered the terror threat, which kind of tells me, you know, they're still in the same line of thinking as President Obama. They are. And uh, this, unfortunately, is what the radical Islamists are counting on. And, you know, in a, in a memorandum that was discovered during the Holy Land Foundation trial, it talked about the fact that in America, we would have people who were so interested in political correctness that we would allow them to destroy us. Yeah, yeah, I remember, I think it was Khrushchev who said that uh, communism would win without firing a shot, something to that effect. Mm -hmm. Speaking of politics, let's come back home for a moment. Uh, the Ted Cruz, Donald Trump rivalry going, uh, some people think really off board here with the fight over the wives now. Moments ago, Ted Cruz had a comment. I want to share it with you in the audience uh, to, Tom, to Donald Trump. Okay. It's not easy to tick me off. I don't get angry often, but you mess with my wife, you mess with my kids, that'll do it every time. 
Donald, you're a sniveling coward and leave Heidi the hell alone. So will you support him as the nominee? I'm going to beat him for the nomination. Not he is not. Senator. I am answering the question. Donald Trump will not be the nominee. Obviously, uh, I don't know if I've ever seen Ted Cruz that upset. Uh, does he have a point there at all? Well, I'll put it this way. There's plenty of sleaze in the political world. Sure. And, uh, that, you know, that was one thing that I discovered. I mean, it was extremely distasteful. And uh, we have sort of come to accept that that's going to be the case. Uh, I was hoping maybe we could change that narrative. And, and I haven't totally given up on that. But, you know, these are not things that should be going on in the Republican Party or the Democrat Party. Aren't, aren't we adults? And uh, can't we actually deal with the issues? They're such serious issues, and it's so hard to get that point across to people. Dr. Carson, you've endorsed Donald Trump, and you've become closer to him. When you see the tweet that he retweeted with a photograph of uh, his wife and, 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 and Ted Cruz's wife, what do you say to him about that? Do you say anything at all? Uh, well, I understand that, that he's doing what has become popular in America, uh, you know, tweeting and being nasty and, and you know people will come out and they'll say things against it but they go home and do the same thing you know there, there's a cultural problem that's going on in our nation that we need to deal with from the top all the way down uh, I call it trickle-down ethics we need to, to, to really begin to demonstrate this at the highest levels so that it begins to take hold to the population in general if it doesn't change, what do you think happens to this country? If we keep going down this particular route uh, when it's acceptable by anyone uh, to sort of do these kind of things that maybe in the past it wasn't? We will destroy ourselves. Uh, you know, as Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, said, uh, as Jesus said, not it was Solomon, it was Jesus. And then it was echoed by Abraham Lincoln, a house divided against itself cannot stand. We are in the process of destroying ourselves. We need some strong leadership or we're going to go off the cliff. Well, you were on The View today and you made a lot of news on The View, but there's one particular clip I'd like to have the audience listen to. Okay. Let's take a listen. This guy is, I'm sorry, he's a racist and he's not good for the country. What's the alternative? And I'm sorry, I just, I don't understand. He's not said about... The, the white supremacist, he hasn't really said to them, hey, listen, that's not what America stands for. He said, you know, I, it's too much. For, I, I, you're Ben Carson. But, you're so much better than this. Well, I am Ben Carson. And, and that's the very reason I'm doing this is because I look at the big picture. Could I focus only on racial issues? Absolutely. Could I focus only on women's issues? Absolutely. I could look at any one little thing and pick anybody apart on it. But right now, the nature of our country is at stake. We know that the uh, liberals and progressives are going to carry the racist stuff all the way through the general election. It, right. By the way, it's in their playbook no matter who the Republican candidate is. Exactly. Uh, I would have liked to have seen stronger initial reaction from Donald Trump, but he's, he's refuted it enough times that I think it's a, a non-issue for most voters. Sure. But having said that, you mentioned these smaller issues. Do these smaller issues, though, actually add up to larger issues? Is there, or, you know, is there a blanket answer that, that covers all of that? They're, they're important issues, and they need to be dealt with. There's no question about that. And, you know, through some of the initiatives that I'm involved with, uh, you know, My Faith Votes, and uh, some of the other things that we're going to be doing, we're looking for ways to create, you know, more peace among people, more harmony, more uh, relationships, but also ladders of opportunity because a lot of the turmoil in our society is secondary to frustration. There's been a lot of hope, but not very much change. We have to put some things into effect that will allow us to once again be the can-do society, not the what-can-you-do-for-me society. Well, i got to tell you, you know, I was sad to see you leave the race. I'm glad you're making the rounds. Uh, you are a voice of reason. Thank it's got to resonate no matter who wins this election. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks a lot, sir.